Good evening and welcome to the May 17, 2017 legislative session of the Town Board uh, meeting. I'll officially call the meeting to order. I'll ask that everyone please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I'll ask our clerk to please call the roll. Cole. Here. LaFountain. Here. Metzler. Here. Moore. Here. Quinn. Here. Okay, before we get started uh, this evening with our um, public hearing, uh, I would like to uh, invite uh, uh, Ms. Barbara and Ms. Jan to join us at the podium, and uh, I will assume the uh, correct position. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. LaFountain, after four years of being your teacher, I would expect you to sit up straight, feet flat on the floor, and I want to see those hands folded nicely on top of your desk. We want to make sure we know what you're doing at all times. <laughs> or, not. or not doing. <laughs> if he has a dazed look in his eye, and thank you, and good evening. I'm Barbara Quinn, and I'm the proud coordinator of Penfield's historic 1857 Dayton's Corner Schoolhouse Museum. And I have with me tonight one of our teachers. Mm -hmm. How many years, Miss Jan? I oh. hate to say, probably, <laughs> probably 12 or 13. Excellent. Or 13. And she is also our treasurer of our Friends of Dayton's Corners. And uh, we um, are pleased to come to before you again tonight to invite everyone to our annual Dayton's Corners School Pie Social with free pony rides for the kids. We will be getting our ponies as we normally do from Heberly's. And it's to be held on Sunday, June 4th from 2 to 4 in the afternoon. It's such an enjoyable and relaxing step back into history. And uh, by the way, I did check, check the Farmer's Almanac and it tells us it should be in the 70s. We always hope it's not gonna be too hot and only a 10% chance of rain. And I thought, perfect. So <laughs> by the way, Dayton's Corner School Teachers also would like to officially thank Jim Kreckman and his crew from the town for all the cleanup from the windstorm in March. We lost a huge tree. First of all, two large limbs came down and crushed the, the slide, um, and hopefully we'll be getting that replaced. Um, then within a couple of weeks, mm -hmm. those limbs were taken care of. I cannot tell you how many limbs, branches and so on, and then down came the tree. And the tree, I couldn't tell you how old it is. It might be as old as the school. Um, from 160 years old, again, it's giant. And you can mm -hmm. see that it was, it had, it was kind of sick. It, you know, the branches came down because they were weak and, and the center was all uh, um, dug out maybe by, by creatures or whatever, or ants and so on. And so just at the time we were saying last week, oh gee, the limbs got cleaned up, the branches got cleaned, somebody's Christmas tree that had blown in from the windstorm that attached itself to the school. And the school was unharmed, by the way. Then there were ruts, huge ruts in, I know, she went to check them out, where the trucks had to come in. And of course, everything was just so soupy. What did we see this happening? But yesterday and the day yes, before. I was there. Everything has been fixed, smoothed over. It's just like, it's like no sooner said than done. And we thank everybody, just a smile on our faces. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Man, so when we have our last class, mm -hmm. which will probably be, well, we, I have one coming up Wednesday, mm -hmm. and we have two the following week to make up for two that were canceled during the windstorm. The children will maybe be able to go out and play there. We ended up playing down below. We so, went out. Okay. We went out. Wow. Well, after last year's and the year before and the year before, very successful and well attended pie social. We have again ordered extra pies, especially the chocolate cream pie, <laughs> Mr. Quinn, from Baker Street Bakery and we thank Bill and Mary Ellen Leonardo, Penfield residents who have the Baker Street Bakery for helping us with the pies. Um, I was so happy that people from the community came in droves for the pies and the cookies and the lemonade and the pony <coughs> rides and the music and the playground equipment and tours of the school, informative conversations with the teachers. 
Um, this year at Dayton's Corners, we had 50 classes of fourth graders attend our beautiful 1857 school, held the school open for special visitations for various groups. People who visit are always appreciative of what we do and what we offer them, and so attentive to the history presented at the gatherings. There is such interest this year that I've been asked to do presentations in Penfield, Webster, and again for our senior Oasis group. I'm very proud of our teachers too who, who tirelessly volunteer their time, talent, and expertise to teach the fourth graders who come to Dayton's Corners. And some teachers are teaching one day a week as it's basically open. Some people come in October and December, some classes, and most of them are February, March, April, and May. Um, it, it was fun this year that our board liaison and councilwoman Linda Cole um, always has paid attention to what's going on and asks questions and so on. And we'll get you in as a teacher aide again. Mm -hmm. um, I also would like to thank Supervisor Tony LaFountain who supports this historic Penfield landmark through his many efforts and the cutting of pies at the Pie Social Town historian Kathy Kanauer for her constant contact with me and also help with the Pi Social and Councilman Rob Quinn. And somebody said they were gonna make sure that Rob Quinn cut more pies than he ate. Is that correct? <laughs> what was it? Actually, what, uh, what was actually, Ms. Jan and I um, had commented on that fact and uh, we were a bit concerned that we could have uh, had a little bit more profit, uh, but uh, uh, a, few, a few aspects of uh, pies uh, seem to just disappear. Oh, it is. I always try to, to, to lend a hand where I can. <laughs> well, it, I'll tell you, it is, it is fun. It is wonderful. We always have great thank you notes from the children so their teachers have them go back to the classroom and uh, write some very, very poignant thank you notes. And generally they're talking about the very unusual punishments that we do explain. <laughs> Had been probably in 1857 and we do have, by the way, in September, I think 160 years. Mm -hmm. So we have a, a milestone coming up. We found some wonderful uh, maps that were in the building. Um, and I said, this building is made of brick. Was there a, a wooden structure on the property before 1857? And on this map from 1852, you can see Penfield District Number 9 School, and there it is. And, and I'm sure it was wooden. There might have been something happened to it. It could have burned down. Many did. Um, so we have just one more piece of, of history that we can Fantastic. share with the kids. So Excellent. thank you Excellent. very much for letting me take the time. And don't forget. Sunday, June 4th from 2 to 4 at the Dayton's Corner Schoolhouse for the annual Pie Social. And we look forward to it. It's I'm a so wonderful glad. event, uh, wonderful for, for the help. community. So thank you, thank you, for, thank you uh, Barbara, for yourself and uh, all of your yeah. teachers that uh, work so hard uh, to run those 50 plus classes uh, through. Very impressive, uh, very important, uh, I know, to the students uh, as part of their curriculum. So thank you. Super. Thank, thank you. All right. Thank very you very good. much. Thank you, Jan. Okay, I'll uh, ask our clerk uh, to uh, please read the legal notice uh, for our public hearing. To consider approval of a solar PV system and subdivision of town land. The legal notice was published in the Penfield Post on April 27th, 2017, posted on the town's website and town clerk bulletin board. No postcards were mailed due to this being a town-wide action. Right. Thank you very much. So I'm gonna kick this uh, off initially uh, just to give a brief uh, update. Uh, in the audience tonight, uh, we have our town engineer, uh, Mark Valentine. Uh, we have uh, from Larson Engineers, uh, our consultant uh, on the project, Newt Green. Uh, and uh, we have our facilities foreman, uh, Jim Kreckman. Um, so this uh, project uh, started almost uh, two years ago. And uh, one of the things that the town was looking to do uh, was to install a solar array uh, at our DPW facility on Jackson Road. Uh, this board held a public uh, information meeting. Uh, in fact, those that uh, came and attended uh, were uh, very supportive uh, of the effort of doing that. Uh, one of the things that uh, the town has had a history of uh, dating back into the uh, late 80s is uh, looking to, uh, to, to, to go green, uh, to recycle, to recycle, uh, to look at uh, sustainability uh, overall, to also take a look at uh, al al alternatives uh, to the energy that uh, we're using, and hence uh, the solar project. 
uh, as we continue down the path, uh, working very closely with our town attorney and an outside attorney, uh, we worked uh, on putting together a power purchase agreement uh, and we've got uh, that uh, in place. And then as you can imagine, there have been certain hurdles that uh, we've had to work through um, and Larson has uh, helped uh, guide us through that uh, effort. And, um, and each time we make uh, a corner, it seems like we learn new things. And uh, so the most recent uh, thing that we have uh, learned is, is that even though the town of Penfield owns the property, um, there's something in the law that says that you cannot have multiple, multiple meters on that property. So we have a meter for DPW, uh, we need a meter for the solar array. So one of the, one of the requirements in the law was uh, for us to sub subdivide the property. So the purpose of tonight's meeting is to subdivide uh, the property. And I'm going to uh, ask uh, any one of our uh, three gentlemen uh, maybe just to take uh, 30 seconds to highlight uh, on the map. And then one of the things that uh, we're waiting for is the final uh, meets and bounds uh, from Solar City, who is our uh, contractor and partner as part of this uh, effort. Um, and uh, we will then uh, make that uh, final uh, meets and bounds, file the subdivision uh, map or resubdivision map. Uh, all the land will still be owned by the town of Penfield, but we'll have achieved the requirement of having a separate parcel, a separate parcel ID uh, for the meter uh, for that. Uh, so I might uh, just ask um, uh, Mr. Kreckman, uh, because I know he enjoys um, uh, uh, this project and uh, what uh, it's gonna do. And uh, Jim, if you, if you might just uh, give us at a high level uh, where the property lines are and uh, things like that, and uh, we can talk about uh, where we are from a next step standpoint. Yeah, sure. So um, I've got two maps up here. One is a picture of the actual solar array uh, that is being proposed with the highway garage being located right here. It is to the southern portion of that property. Um, so uh, as it stands right now, this parcel is just one big piece of property and we need to have it subdivided to be able to allow RG&E to allow another meter on the property to uh, work in conjunction with the solar panels. Right. So like you said, the reason for the meeting is we need to have the subdivided to be able to do that. And um, once that takes place, uh, a lot of other items could start falling into place with the, with the solar panels. So, Excellent. That's pretty much the, uh, okay. the, meat, the meat of it. Thank there. you. Thank you, okay. Jim. You're welcome. Um, so the purpose of uh, the public hearings uh, certainly are to hear from the public. And um, so uh, the purpose of this public hearing is uh, to hear anyone uh, in uh, in the town that uh, has an interest to speak uh, for, against, or ask any questions regarding the subdivision. And uh, I'll ask our clerk, uh, has anyone signed up uh, to speak for this public hearing? No, they have not. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to address the board uh, specifically on this matter? It's the subdivision of the property uh, at 1607 Jackson Road for the purpose of having a separate parcel for a meter for uh, the solar array that's being proposed at that site. Okay, and I'll ask the board, uh, board, uh, do you have any questions uh, for any of our resident experts that uh, we have here, our town engineer, our consultant from Larson, or our uh, facilities foreman? I just have one out of curiosity, Jim. What, what is the breakdown by acreage between the two? What's the total acreage right now of the parcel and then as subdivided? Yeah, so the total acreage. Uh, Jim, if you would, if, yeah, uh, we do tape these, yes, so sir. we want to so, see your smiling face and hear your, hear your wonderful voice. <laughs> Thank you, appreciate that. So uh, currently it is a 30 acre parcel and it will be subdivided down to about 11 acres okay. on, the, on, this, on the second parcel okay. where the solar array will set. Thank okay. you. You're welcome. Okay. Board, other questions or comments? No, just comment. This is just another step in the process. We've certainly been excited about this and been educated all along about the uh, value of the solar array in this, this project. So um, this is just a necessary step legally that we need to take. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then I'll just ask um, our staff, uh, our town engineer, our consultant, uh, and our facilities foreman, any additional comments that uh, you believe is pertinent uh, to this hearing that uh, has not been added to the public record that should be on the record itself? No, I do not. Okay. 
Um, uh, again, if you would uh, come up, identify yourself, uh, and uh, and then any appropriate comment. Thank you. Yes, um, good evening everyone. My name is Newton Green. I'm a senior associate with Larson Engineers. And uh, thank you for allowing me to be here tonight to uh, speak. I want to really thank the town of Penfield for how supportive you have been on this project. Um, <clears throat> Jim and Mark and, and you, Tony, as well, have been very helpful in moving this along. It is a long process. Uh, unfortunately, that's the nature of installing solar arrays uh, in the state of New York. One thing that I did want to mention is what this subdivision will do is with this will allow the town of Penfield to extract the maximum profit from the solar array. Um, if we did not subdivide the property, we would um, end up having a much uh, lower profit margin from this array, so this will so this will really help everyone out. Uh, that's really all I have to say. Um, if there's no further questions, okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Newt. Thank okay. you very much. Seeing no further questions or comments, uh, then I will officially close uh, this uh, public hearing. Uh, the next steps uh, are that uh, the board will uh, next take up uh, the discussion on this matter at our next work session. It'll be next Wednesday uh, here in the town hall at, a, at 7 p.m. I always encourage everyone to take a look at the agenda that'll be online typically in the afternoon. Uh, so it'll be on uh, the uh, website this, at, this Friday afternoon and uh, that'll reflect uh, this matter on the agenda as well as the full agenda that the board will have before it. So again, thank you. Thank you gentlemen uh, for being here this evening and uh, we'll continue on with our agenda. Thank you. All right, uh, our next item is uh, the approval of the minutes. Uh, we have the October 19th minutes uh, before us. I move that the minutes of April 19th be approved. I'll second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Uh, is there any discussion by the board members? No. Seeing none, I'd ask for a roll call vote. Hull? Aye. LaFountain? Aye. Metzler? Aye. Moore? Aye. Quinn? Aye. Five ayes. Thank you, we'll move on to communications and announcements. And uh, we'll start with our clerk, please. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. The mobile DMV for Tuesday, May 23rd is canceled due to assessment grievance day for the town of Penfield. This service will resume on Tuesday, May 30th. For a complete list of mobile DMV locations throughout the week, visit MonroeCounty.gov or you can call Penfield Town Clerk's Office at 340-8629. Also, the town of Penfield will be hosting its annual free rabies vaccination clinic on Saturday, June 3rd from 10 a.m. to noon at the Public Works Complex 1607 uh, Jackson Road. The clinic is a service for dogs and cats of Penfield residents. Dogs must be leashed and cats must be in carriers. All pets must be at least three months old. For uh, more information, you can call uh, me at 340-8629. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Quinn. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Good evening, everyone. Mm -hmm. Two announcements. The ever popular and always delicious Dayton's Corners Pie Social will be held on Sunday, June 4th from 2 o'clock to 4 o'clock in the afternoon. There will be free pony rides for the kids, music, playground equipment, tours of the historic schoolhouse, and an opportunity to spend time with the teachers. <clears throat> Dayton's Corners School is located at the corner of Creek, and Plank, Creek Street and Plank Road. For more information, please call Barbara Quinn or Miss Brooks at 385-1491. And second, the County of Monroe recently completed the installation of a solar powered traffic control device at the intersection of Whalen and Baird Road. A flashing beacon was installed to aid driver awareness of this high traffic intersection and improve safety for crossing pedestrians. Approximately 15,000 vehicles pass through this intersection each day. The device is installed on is installed on the tops on the stop signs facing east and west on Whalen Road. It's low maintenance, utilizing renewable energy, and will hopefully enhance visibility of the stop signs. Thank you very much. Thank you. This is Messler. I have two announcements um, this evening. First, the town of Penfield Spring Drop-Off will run this Friday, May 19th from 7.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. and Saturday, May 20th from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Public Works Complex, 1607 Jackson Road. This service is for Penfield residents only and proof of residency will be checked at the gate. Also, in conjunction with our spring drop-off, I wanted to alert residents um, who are cleaning up and cleaning out that um, 
There will be an initiative called Vacuums for Vets. Um, it's the third annual Vacuums for Vets initiative where any vacuums um, of any type, hand vac, steam vac, um, um, dirt devil type things, uh, shop vacs, and any accessories or parts as well that are donated to the drop off will be set aside, kept out of the landfill. Um, a local Penfield resident, Eagle Scout and Duquesne University student, Mitchell Krenzer, will be um, heading up this third annual Vacuums for Vets. What Mitchell has done the past three years is come at the end of the drop off, gather up all the vacuums and vacuum parts and accessories, broken running condition or not, doesn't matter what condition they are in, takes them away, keeps them out of the landfill and uh, refurbishes and fixes the vacuums and then has connected with local veterans agencies whereby he donates the, the vacuums to veterans who are transitioning into civilian life, um, some who are transitioning into independent living or have special needs um, or just are in need of household items including a vacuum. Um, he's done many, many of these over the past three years and the, t the residents have been really appreciative and helpful in <coughs> donating their vacuums. So uh, Vacuums for Vets will run again um, during our spring drop off. You'll see flyers about it. And in the interest of full transparency, I'm very proud that Mitchell is my nephew. So um, mm -hmm. certainly I would like to give a special plug for everybody to, to dig out their old vacuums and um, support my nephew's great project here. Um, also, my second announcement on Saturday, May 20th, uh, join our Penfield community in helping out your neighbors in the annual Terry Rothfuss Memorial Good Neighbor Day. Good Neighbor Day has volunteers reach out to seniors, veterans, or those who are disabled in helping to do light yard work and spring cleaning. This event will begin at the Rothfuss Farm, 1865 Salt Road, for volunteers to receive their assignments. To register for this event, or if you are someone who could use an extra hand this spring, Call Sabrina Renner at Penfield Recreation at 340-8651. And that's all I have for this evening. Great, thank you very much. I'll just note that uh, the <coughs> Penfield Town offices and library will be closed on Monday the 29th in observance of Memorial Day. Mr. Moore. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. On Monday, May 29th, the town of Penfield will hold its annual Memorial Day ceremony at the Penfield Amphitheater beginning at 10.30 a.m. The ceremony of remembrance, remembrance will include the presentation of roses in which individuals may reserve a rose in honor or in memory of an individual who was killed, has served, or is currently serving in our nation's armed forces. If you wish to reserve a rose, please call Sabrina at Penfield Recreation at 340-8651. For details of this event, you can always go to penfieldrec.org. Also, Penfield Recreation presents Rollin' Into Summer, a new event for families to kick off the summer riding season. Rollin' Into Summer will be held on Friday, June 9th from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. at Rothfuss Park. There will be free bike inspections along with helmet fittings, bike demonstrations, music, a bounce house, and food for purchase. For more information on this recreation event, please call the Penfield Recreation Department at 340-8655. Thank you. Thank you. I have two announcements. Yes. Uh, Penfield Amphitheater Music Festival Series begins on Friday, June 2nd. It will take place the music and truck rodeo the uh, event is featured uh, local food trucks along with musical performances by the Penfield School District music groups. The Amphitheater and the Kiwanis Stage are located behind the Veterans Memorial, behind the Town Hall. Please bring your lawn chairs, a blanket, and if, there's going to be a lot of different concerts during the summer at the Amphitheater. Be sure to get that information at penfieldrec.org. And my other announcement is that my annual, my monthly community chat will take place in June, on June 20th, in the new book area in the library. Thank you. Thank From 5.30 to 7.30. Thank you. 7.30 to 7.30. All right. Mr. Horowitz? I have no announcements this evening, All right, Mr. sir. Supervisor. Thank you very much. We'll move on to public participation. Two opportunities to do that uh, at this point, and then again at the end of the agenda. You can do that one of three ways. If you're here in the audience, uh, you can address the board on any matter at the podium. You can call in at 340-8771, or you can log on at uh, penfield.org. I know that our clerk uh, has uh, received uh, at least one inquiry, uh, inquiry and uh, I'll start uh, with that. If you would like to read that into the record, please. Okay. 
On Tuesday, May 16th, I received an email from town resident Bob Peterson asking me to read the following questions, which will be added to the record. These questions are directed to Supervisor LaFountain. Number one, can you give the community an update on the status of the Shadow Pines moratorium? A, what is the appraised market value of the Shadow Pines tract? B, has the town reached a tentative purchase agreement with Dolomite, and if not, when? And C, has an environmental analysis of the property been conducted, if not, when? There's a second question, is it your intent to have the Shadow Pines referendum on the November 2017 ballot? if not when, and three, the final report from the moratorium advisory committee, as well as 96% of the 455 public comments, recommended that the town purchase shadow pines and maintain the property as a combination of active and passive open space. Has the town's planning staff started work to identify the best land use alternatives that would become the proposal to be put in front of the community for a referendum, and if not when? Okay, thank you. So I will uh, I'll hit those uh, in order. Um, as it relates to the appraisal, appraised uh, market value, uh, I will not divulge that at this time because we are currently in active uh, negotiations uh, and discussions uh, with the Dolomite uh, group. Um, we have not uh, reached uh, any type of uh, formal agreement at this time. Uh, there is active, ongoing, uh, and a uh, you know, very good uh, dialogue that is going on uh, between uh, the town and the Dolomite uh, group. Um, the, the environmental analysis of the property has not been done. Uh, there is obviously expense associated with that. That's one of the items that uh, we have had as part of our discussion. And uh, certainly um, one of the things that we would do is if uh, we were able to reach a formal agreement, that would be one of the conditions uh, would to be to uh, do a formal environmental analysis. Um, is the intent to have the uh, referendum on the, uh, on, on the ballot in November? Uh, I think this board has uh, discussed that uh, if we're able to strike a deal, uh, we will do that uh, based on uh, the calendar, meaning uh, that uh, if we're able to uh, reach a deal, uh, we've said all along, it's a minimum of 60 days uh, to go through and uh, to get something on the ballot. Uh, so if we were to reach an agreement tomorrow, it would be 60 days from that point. If we reach an agreement uh, in November, it would be 60, to 60 days minimum from that uh, period of time. And uh, since, uh, since the moratorium extension has been put in place, a lot of work has been done by uh, staff uh, as well as the town board and town attorney. Okay, thank you. Uh, we'll uh, uh, ask the clerk, uh, is there uh, anyone who has signed up for public participation? No, they have not. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to address the board on any matter? And I see our friend uh, Ed Linsku, followed by Jerry Russ. Good evening, Ed Let's go uh, 40 Willow Pine Way. At least I got the address right this time. You still own the house though, don't you, Ed? I do. Okay, my, so my son, you, my can't son. Be, you can't be wrong. That's right, my son's living there. Uh, this is in regards to something that happened at Faith Lutheran Church, which I discussed with Linda last night. Uh, we signed an agreement with Lime Energy Services Company, which is an agent for rg and &E, to do retrofitting. Uh, they did a lighting retrofit in the building. They did a light, lighting retrofit um, in the parking lot and both were successful. And they did a lighting retrofit in the front yard, which was totally unsuccessful and we got ripped off. Uh, on the PO here, uh, if I can find all the invoice data, the vendor is listed as B-U-Z-Y-N-S-I-S-K-I Electric Incorporated, 60, 1627 Phillips Road, Appleton, New York, and I have no idea where that is. I'm, I'm assuming that's the, the contractor, but the contractor didn't install the work according to code, and the fixtures simply fell over when they were touched. There was no mechanical connection between the fixture and, and the base uh, junction box that was there. 
And I just wanted to alert the town that maybe this is happening in more places than at Faith. This is for commercial buildings only. But uh, I'm gonna continue to follow up with my local, uh, find out if these people were even licensed. We weren't allowed to pick the contractor. The contractor was done by Lyme. So we don't, from there, uh, I dumped it back. In do you know? Do you know if it was uh, inspected uh, at it by one of the? It was not inspected. It was not inspected by one of their work of the... has been inspected. And I don't know if that's required by the town or not. Uh, those are questions I had. Sure. Sure. Uh, there, there are there are multiple independent uh, electrical firms that do inspections uh, within the town. Well, within all the towns across, most uh, towns do not do their own electrical inspection yeah, just I based on the specialty. That, no, no inspection is required. Why? Yeah, right. Because you're, you're doing a, a retrofit. Now, I don't know whether retrofits require an inspection or not, but they're going on all over the area. I know, yeah, absolutely. I do know that. Okay. I'm going to continue to, to follow up on this. I think we're going to rectify this situation in-house. Uh, we have the personnel that can do this. Uh, we got a good price, but obviously it was too cheap. I was to just going to—I was going to say, just because it's a good price doesn't always mean you get the you get the best work. That's right. But according to our, our uh, buildings and, and grounds person, that they weren't allowed to have any input on the contractor, so they simply uh, got who who was provided to them. Got it. With the materials. Got it. Okay. You'll keep us uh, posted on that. I will do that. Okay. Well, if the guy wasn't licensed, and I have no idea if he had any electrical experience, it certainly didn't look like it from the installation he put in. Yeah, right. Uh, he should be disbarred from the area. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Okay, Ed, thank you. Jerry. I'm Jerry Russ, and I live at 101 Heather Drive. And uh, there are two things and, uh, that I have to say, and it's really a great source of pride, both issues. One of them is that I'm proud of my fellow Penfield townsmen for their overwhelming passage of the school board budget yesterday. I think that they did the right thing. They gave the school system uh, the tools that they needed to, uh, to carry on their mission. The other thing is, is that last week marked the 100th anniversary of the entry of the United States into World War I. And um, this, is, uh, this will be celebrated, the, cent the World War I centennial will be celebrated for a whole year up until uh, Veterans Day of 2018. And what the uh, town board might consider, you know, that I would suggest that they might consider is the American Legion has created a flag, a centennial flag, which is suitable for flying in public buildings and posts and so on. And it's relatively inexpensive, it's about $50. And uh, we may want to consider uh, acquiring one. I think that uh, the, the, the First World War, they called it the Great War because it was, a, uh, it was a conflict, it was the first modern war, really a conflict that was uh, unlike any that came before it and it was particularly horrific uh, experience for those who have been there. And it's our most recent war where there are no living survivors. So uh, again, I might uh, suggest that you might want to uh, consider the purchase of a flag for display here at our town hall. All right, I think that's a great suggestion, Jerry. I'll uh, ask uh, Jim Kreckman, I wish he was still here. Jim Kreckman is our facilities foreman and uh, Jim is the one that uh, manages all of our flags uh, across the town. Uh, internally and externally, so I'll, I'll make sure that uh, Jim uh, gets on that. Okay. All right, thanks, Jerry. Thank you very much. Yes, we have a, a couple of more speakers here. Carol, welcome. On the Carol. back of a napkin, Carol? <laughs> no, it's on your form. <laughs> okay, got it. <laughs> I'm Carol Samuel and I live at 27 Huntington Meadow, not too far from Shadow Pines. So I wanted to keep in the forefront the development of the next comprehensive plan and ask what has been happening as you approach developing that. Um, we do know that there was, would have been a possibility to have changed over the Shadow Pines property 
on the last comprehensive plan. And, and the one before that, and, and the, the one, one before that. Yeah, so it's yes. not just you folks, but a lot of predecessors who could have saved us from all this agony now. Uh, so I want to know what's going on, and I do have a lot of people who know of my interest in safe shadow pines who are saying to me, what's going on? What's going on? I've heard this, I've heard that. Uh, I don't know. So we are just so hoping that something positive, especially as the moratorium committee presented it, and the community seems to present it, that we will come out with green space. And so in the development of that comprehensive plan. So what is the plan for developing the plan? <laughs> So, so we have started, uh, staff has started uh, pulling some uh, things together. Um, uh, the town board uh, will be looking here over the next uh, month uh, to roll out a formal timeline, uh, identifying uh, all the different milestones uh, associated uh, with that. Um, there is a rough draft that uh, staff uh, and myself have uh, had some discussion on. I've uh, sent them back, uh, asked them to uh, plug in a, a little bit more information. And then one of the things that this board will do is that we'll roll it out at one of our work sessions uh, here uh, upcoming so that folks will see that. Then we'll we'll do like we do on a, a number of major projects. Uh, we'll, we'll have it uh, on the website uh, so that uh, it'll be, you know, projects of interest. And uh, that way, like we did with Shadow Pines, there'll be projects of interest so that any time uh, any new information, documents, things like that, it'll be added to the website so folks can follow that, uh, follow that along. Okay, so the possible timeline for that is within the next couple months? I, I was gonna say, with, I'm gonna say within about the next uh, month or so, uh, we, should, uh, we should have that uh, all, all completed. Uh, we were trying to shoot a little bit sooner than that and we kind of got ourselves uh, tied up with uh, some water issues. Oh, and, did uh, we? <laughs> and, and some, uh, and some uh, high winds and uh, some damages and some things like that. So our, yeah, our, team, our team is, uh, to their credit, they've been working on a, on a lot of things. Uh, uh, so I, I would expect uh, about over the next month or so we should be able to get that uh, rolled out and uh, then try to be very aggressive uh, with that uh, so that uh, we don't let that just sit around and idle for you know any periods of time but to be very aggressive uh, with that. Again, aggressive within reason so that uh, we're not rushing for the sake of rushing and missing anything but, but also not let it drag out for you know uh, several years either. And I would presume perhaps that the public has some chance to make suggestions yep, to you? Yep, absolutely. Uh, so certainly a couple of things that we've been kicking around is, uh, you know, having a team or, or a committee that uh, we put together, uh, having a series of public information meetings, uh, have opportunities on the website uh, that during the course of the process that folks could uh, offer in suggestions and comments so that uh, we keep that uh, dialogue going both ways. Okay. It is our community. We it, want it to be the best. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Carol. Good to see you. Thank you. All right. Jeff Burns. Oh, those are some crazy legs there, Jeff. What's that? I said some crazy legs there. Some crazy legs, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy I can be showing them today. <laughs> <laughs> we got cameras on every angle, so. <laughs> uh, Jeff Burns, 39 Scarborough Park. Hello, town board. And uh, I have a couple of questions to follow up with Bob Peterson's uh, questions. Um, one is, uh, what is this, what are the, what is the order of the steps here in terms of uh, the environmental analysis and the offer uh, and we're reaching some sort of an agreement, a formal agreement with, uh, with Dolomite? Is the uh, environmental analysis after that or would it be before that? After that. Okay, yeah, because I noted in your October uh, follow-up that you had said then that there would be uh, the necessity for a preliminary um, environmental analysis. Is that what you're referring to here? So there hasn't yes. been any environmental there ha analysis. There has pretty, pr a pretty expensive endeavor yep. and we wanna make sure that uh, we've got uh, all of our I's dotted and T's crossed. Okay, how expensive, what, what sort of, uh, what's, well, what's the scale? Uh, up, we're upwards at? of about uh, 15 to $20,000. Okay. Um, 
And uh, do we have uh, a feeling for what the time frame is uh, in terms of the negotiations for having an agreement? Is there a, an objective uh, as far as a time frame for that? I do not, Jeff. Yeah. I, I will say that uh, both parties are negotiating and having discussions in good faith. Um, I think the, the conversations have been uh, very, uh, very positive, very informative, uh, and uh, so um, as soon as uh, there is anything that we can share, we'll definitely share that. Okay. I have a, a, a little bit of a concern that uh, if you were to have uh, an agreement as to whether 60 days is enough to uh, inform the public as to what you know what the options are and uh, to have people motivated. Well, I, I think I've said them several times. Minimum 60 days. Minimum. Okay. Yep. I've said right. minimum 60 days. Okay, it'll I'm it'll take gonna... what it'll it'll take what it'll take uh, yeah. to do what we need to do. Okay. I'm just concerned that it would happen sure. in the middle of summer suddenly and everybody's nobody's around. Well, I think around. Uh, I think this board historically has uh, has indicated that uh, you know that uh, no major uh, actions would be taken on different things uh, during what we call those prime vacation months. And I think right. that's been uh, basically this, this board's policy for, uh, uh, I'll speak to uh, seven and a half, half years, uh, and uh, probably even more than that. Good, that puts me at ease, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's see. You had said in reference to uh, Bob's third question, uh, uh, that uh, a lot of work has been done. Uh, can you be more specific in terms of what his question was uh, that there were, uh, that the moratorium committee uh, and the comments overwhelmingly supported having a combination of active and passive open space. Um, uh, what, what can you tell me about the work that has been done to uh, look at what the best land use alternatives would be there. So certainly, um, as I uh, indicated when, when Carol was speaking, uh, staff has been pulling uh, some uh, materials together for the board uh, to take a look at. Uh, there's been a lot of discussions uh, as we've gone through and have had discussions uh, with Old Castle, uh, understanding what uh, what limitations uh, that they have. They, they, they may have some specific limitations on the land, and so we're just making sure that we understand all that and that out uh, not only with you know with our staff but uh, our legal folks okay but the um, the type of use that we're looking at is open space green space to make this into what I would call you know. what I would call um, a combination of uh, general municipal use uh, so uh, that uh, you know it uh, gives us uh, the flexibility as we take a look uh, for a lot of things with uh, open space uh, recreation uh, those types of things okay Good. Great. Uh, and then in terms of the comprehensive plan, will there be discussions of uh, zoning for a recreational space or open space? Uh, I, I, I recall that the moratorium advisor, advisory committee had touched on that, but then it was kind of uh, put off uh, uh, at the end that, that uh, they didn't, uh, my understanding is you didn't want it to get uh, side sidetracked on that at the end of, the, uh, of their meetings. Uh, will that be part of the discussion? So, so certainly when you go into a comprehensive plan, uh, you take a look at everything. You take a look at uh, all the all the uh, current, uh, so you start with your base, with what you have. Uh, so we've got a comprehensive plan that uh, has been built up over many, many years. Uh, that certainly starts off with a base. A lot of hard work uh, went into that, so you don't, certainly don't want to lose uh, that foundation. And then I think the discussion uh, becomes, and uh, so uh, some members of uh, this dais have been on uh, those uh, plans in the past, uh, you take a look at uh, everything, uh, and uh, you know some of the assumptions that you make. Uh, we have to make sure we don't make again. So, an assumption I think for the last uh, four, or or at least the last three or four comprehensive plans is is that uh, the golf course properties uh, would be golf courses be forever, mm -hmm. and uh, so certainly that's uh, that's a, a, a bad assumption. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, as we go through uh, that uh, that group, that committee, uh, any input that we get uh, from the public, all of those things will have to be on the table for discussion. So there, there could be discussion or there will be discussion oh, I, about I'm, zoning. I'm, oh, I'm sure there is. And, I'm and sure I'm sure there will be. Specifically I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out on a limb, Jeff, to say that there will be a lot of discussion about a lot of zoning uh, because if you think uh, if you think about it, uh, you know, there are some areas that uh, today uh, might be uh, our one zoning that uh, you know the committee might recommend is uh, even larger lots than that. Uh, there might be some areas that are, are what I'll call a fill-in uh, 
uh, where you've got um, 10 or 12 acres uh, and it's surrounded by, um, you know, a particular zone that you might want to uh, make sure the zones are comparable. So I, I think uh, as part of the comprehensive plan, really it's important to take a look at all properties. Mm -hmm. But zoning for open space or green space or recreational use or something like that, that seemed to be missing. Is that, so that will be. Uh, that yeah, will be I, I would say that yeah. definitely is something Good. that's gonna be on the table for discussion. Great, Yeah. okay. And then a last question for Paula. I have a question about the. Vacuums? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think that vacuum project sounds terrific. <laughs> uh, but the spring drop off, I just had a quick question because some people have asked me about this. Will there be shredding, paper shredding available at that? There have been on, in the past and that was very uh, handy at times. Yeah. No, and in fact, um, if you go to Penfield.org, right on the homepage yep. now, the mm -hmm. spring drop-off is on there as yep. kind of a, a highlighted feature, mm -hmm. and it has a list of, of everything that will okay. be. Will there be paper shredding sometime in the future? Uh, what, what, October. Uh, October. I think it's okay. October 14th. Yeah. Great. If my uh, Saturday is right, uh, <laughs> it'll be October 14th. Okay, thank you very much. I think much. of spring as, as junk <laughs> and fall as recycling. Okay, good. I'll good try point. to keep that in mind. Great, <laughs> great way to look at yeah. it. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. All right, uh, seeing no one else uh, in the audience uh, looking to speak on any matter, uh, we'll move on to additions and deletions to the agenda. I'll recognize Mr. Moore. Mr. Supervisor, I'd like to make one addition to tonight's agenda. It is resolution 17T-122, entitled setting a public hearing to consider a conditional use permit to allow a valet shuttle parking lot at 1387 Empire Boulevard. Thank you. <laughs> Thank Second you. Second the addition. It's been moved and seconded. That will show up um, under additions uh, later on in the agenda. Uh, petitions, has the uh, board, town clerk, or town attorney received any petitions since the last meeting? No. Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to resolution by function, starting with law and finance, please. Authorization for amendment to accounting services contract. Moved. Second. Whereas the town board engages Bonadio and Company, LLP, to audit the town's financial statements and associated notes to financials in accordance to GAAP and GASB. Whereas in course of the audit for fiscal year 2016, prior period research and subsequent adjustments were necessary in the reporting of the town's capital asset valuation for infrastructure. Whereas additional hours outside the scope of normal audit and financial statements were required by Bonadio staff. <coughs> whereas this adjustment does not impact the town's operational funds. Now be it resolved that the agreement with Bonadio and company LLP for auditing services be amended to include an additional $3,000 for time expended outside the scope of original services. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, discussion? I would just make a comment that uh, this uh, is with regards to uh, some uh, stormwater sanitary sewers uh, that have been in the ground for some number of years that uh, over the years had not been uh, accounted for. And uh, Barbara Churdo, our current finance director, identified that uh, through some research that she was doing and uh, working with Bonadio, uh, did a lot of uh, work going back to make sure that we're proper, properly logging uh, all of the sewers, uh, pertinences, and everything uh, consistent uh, with uh, GCAP and GASB uh, requirements. Um, so seeing no further discussion, I'd ask for a roll call vote, please. Cole? Aye. LaFountain? Aye. Metzler? Aye. Moore? Aye. Quinn? Aye. Five ayes. Aye. Authorization for insurance coverage 2017 to 2018. Moved. Second. Whereas the town board requested that insurance quotes be obtained so that the selection could be made for June 1st, 2017 to May 31st, 2018 insurance year. Now be it resolved that the town insurance quote of $126,586.83 from the key insurance and benefits services for coverage with U.S. specialty is approved as they've met all specifications for the town of Penfield. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, discussion? I'm happy, uh, I'm happy to report, uh, based on a lot of hard work uh, by our employees, our department heads, um, our, uh, our premiums uh, for this year, uh, which will end at the end of this month, uh, 531 uh, are uh, currently at uh, about $142,000. Uh, going out for quotes, uh, the quote uh, for U.S. specialty 
uh, and it's the same uh, group uh, that uh, we've worked with. Uh, the rate is 126,000. So, uh, good good efforts uh, and you know <coughs> loss prevention, a lot of activity by our risk management team, uh, identifying and ferreting out uh, different things uh, to help uh, lower those costs. So, see no further discussion. Ask for a roll call vote, please. Cole, aye. The Fountain, aye. Metzler, aye. Moore, aye. Quinn. Aye. Five ayes. Authorization for town attorney and counsel to town attorney to proceed with legal action. Moved. Second. Be resolved that the town board of the town of Penfield hereby authorizes the town attorney and counsel to the town attorney to proceed with legal action against the owner of the property located at 2207 Five Mile Line Road in the town of Penfield. Thank you. Thank you. Discussion? See no discussion. Roll call vote, please. Cole? Aye. The Fountain? Aye. Metzler? Aye. Moore? Aye. Quinn? Aye. Five ayes. Authorization to attend the New York State Floodplain and Stormwater Managers Association Conference. Moved. Second. Whereas the New York State Floodplain and Stormwater Managers Association Conference, I'm sure that's an exciting bunch, <laughs> is scheduled for the June 12th through June 14th, 2017 meeting at the Holiday Inn in Binghamton, New York. Now therefore be it resolved that Mark Valentine, town engineer, Mike O'Connor, assistant town engineer, are hereby authorized to attend this conference to be held on June 12th. Registration fees, meals, and expenses will be allocated from the departmental conference budget line. Total expenses not to exceed $900. Thank you. Thank you. Discussion. So certainly uh, one of those conferences that is timely uh, considering all of the uh, stormwater uh, management uh, and stormwater issues that have uh, occurred here over the last uh, several weeks and certainly the several weeks to come. Um, See no discussion. Roll call vote, please. Cole? Aye. The Fountain? Aye. Metzler? Aye. Moore? Aye. Quinn? Aye. Five ayes. <coughs> Authorization for supervisor to sign a license and hold harmless agreement to allow a portion of a loading dock within a sanitary sewer easement at 1900 Empire Boulevard, Building F. Moved. Second. Be it resolved that the town board of the town of Penfield hereby authorizes a supervisor to sign a license and hold harmless agreement with DeMarco Baytown Associates, owners of the property at 1900 Empire Boulevard, to permit a portion of the loading dock to encroach into a sanitary sewer easement to the town of Penfield, located at 1900 Empire Boulevard, in a form and substance acceptable to the town attorney. Thank you. Thank you. Discussion? See no discussion. Roll call vote, please. Cole? Aye. The Fountain? Aye. Metzler? Aye. Moore? Aye. Quinn? Aye. Five ayes. Granting a conditional use permit and preliminary and final site plan approval to allow a 2034 plus or minus square foot dental office at 1739 Penfield Road. Moved. Second. Whereas an application has been received by the Penfield Town Board pursuant to Chapter 250-5.1. 10-D5 of the code to allow for a conditional use permit and preliminary and final site plans approvals to allow a 2034 uh, plus or minus square foot dental office at 1739 Penfield Road in the Four Corners Zoning District. Whereas the Town Board of the Town of Penfield held public hearing at the Penfield Town Hall on May 3rd, 2017 and set application and to hear persons interested in the question of this issuance the issuance of this permit. Now therefore be it resolved that the applicant's request for the issuance of this conditional use permit is granted subject to the following conditions. For the record, Mr. Supervisor, I'd like to point out that there are roughly 15 conditions. Just about every single one of these conditions is consistent with what we typically see for these type of resolutions in the Four Corners Zoning District. Thank you. All right, thank you. Discussion. Say no discussion or roll call vote, please. Cole? Aye. The Fountain? Aye. Metzler? Aye. Moore? Aye. Quinn? Aye. Five ayes. Budget transfer sidewalks. Moved. Second. Whereas the town engineer has a need to transfer funds from the ARC GIS maintenance line in the engineering administration account to the sidewalks account, whereas there is sufficient funding in the 2017 budget. Be it resolved that the following 2017 budget 
transfer be approved. From engineering arc GIS maintenance to sidewalks and new sidewalk installation in the amount of $11,360. Thank you. Thank you. Discussion. No. Seeing no discussion, roll call vote please. Cole. Aye. LaFountain. <coughs> Aye. Metzler. <coughs> Aye. Moore. Aye. Quinn. Aye. Five ayes. Authorization for town supervisor to sign contracts for town rabies clinic on June 3rd, 2017. So moved. Second. Be it resolved that the town board authorizes the town supervisor to sign the following contracts for the Penfield rabies clinic on Saturday, June 3rd, 2017, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Amelia Monacino and Stacy Crippen. Great. Thank you. Uh, discussion? Seeing no discussion, roll call vote, please. Cole? Aye. LaFountain? Aye. Metzler? <clears throat> Aye. Moore? Aye. Quinn? Aye. Five ayes. Okay, that uh, brings us uh, to the end of our uh, resolutions by function. Uh, is there any <clears throat> old business to come before the board this evening? Seeing none, is there any new business to come before the board this evening? I'll ask our clerk to read 17T122. Setting a public hearing to consider a conditional use permit to allow a <coughs> valet shuttle parking lot at 1387 <coughs> Empire Boulevard. Moved. Second. Whereas an application has been received by the Penfield Town Board for the issuance of a conditional use permit pursuant to chapter 250-9.9-B-3 <coughs> of the code to allow for a valet shuttle parking lot at 1387 Empire Boulevard to provide overflow parking for Murphy's Law operating at 1400 Empire Boulevard in the LaSalle Landing District. Now therefore be it resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Penfield shall hold a public hearing at the Penfield Town Hall on June 7th, 2017 at 7 p.m. on said date to consider said application and to hear all persons interested in the issuance of this conditional use permit pursuant to chapter 250 to provide overflow parking in a valet shuttle lot for Murphy's Law operating at 1400 Empire Boulevard. Thank you. Thank you. Any discussion for it? Seeing none, a roll call vote please. Cole? Aye. LaFountain? Aye. Metzler? Aye. Moore? Aye. Quinn? Aye. Five ayes. Thank you. This brings us to our second uh, public participation. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to address the board on any matter? Okay, seeing none and seeing no further business to come before this meeting, the May 17, 2017 legislative meeting of the town board is hereby adjourned at uh, 7.58 p.m. Uh, the next uh, scheduled legislative meeting will be held June 7th at 7.30, or excuse me, at 7 p.m. in this room. Thank you very much to PCTV. Thank you to everyone that participated. <laughs>